I guess this multimeter review video is also a mailbag video because the multimeter came in this envelope without the retail package. Anyway, let's see what this envelope contains. First of all, there's a pair of test leads and they are TL75, which means they are fluke low end test leads with PVC insulation. The probe tips also have these extra insulation caps which are just snapped on and the tips are in general quite good, they are quite sharp and nothing to complain about. The leads have PVC insulation and they are semi-stiff. I didn't even expect getting premium test leads at this price point. And next thing in the envelope is this paper which is a user guide of Fluke Digital Multimeter. Main things it includes are safety information, and other things which I'll show later. And last but not least, the multimeter itself. This is Fluke 101, one of the cheapest multimeters of Fluke product line, costing less than 50 bucks. Rounded glass on the LCD makes it hard to film without reflections, so sorry for that. Another unusual thing on the front of the meter is there's no input jacks. They are on the bottom of the meter. I'll show later in this video why there's only two input checks. Next I'll go through the features of this multimeter or what this can measure. Starting from off position, the first mode is AC volts, then DC volts with minimum range of 6 volts, then AC millivolts with smaller input impedance, resistance, continuity and diode mode, selectable by yellow button, capacitance mode, and frequency slash duty cycle mode, again selectable by yellow button. And the blue button is hold button which will hold the current reading. Couple words about the shape of this multimeter. The backside is quite heavily curved and there is no rubber protection. So this shape makes it good on the hand, but I can see how some might think this is slippery on some situations depending on things like size of the hand and such things. But in my opinion this fits quite nicely on the hand and it's good. Another good thing is this selector switch. It rotates really easily. It can be rotated with one hand without any problems. As long as that doesn't show any wear or other problems over time, I really like that selector switch. The battery cover located on the back side of the meter can be accessed without a screwdriver with using just a small coin or something like that. I even think it can be accessed using just a finger, let's try. Yeah, I think it is opening a little bit more. And the lock is open. Behind this cover is two AAA batteries which give about 200 hour battery life. And there's no fuse behind this cover. And actually there isn't any fuse at all. Because this meter can't measure current. And as this can't measure current, there aren't any input jacks for current. So just common and one for voltage resistance and so on. Before turning on the meter I haven't found any huge problems and I really like the build quality of this. The LCD can be tested by holding the hold button while turning on the meter. The contrast is much better on the real life than what the camera shows, but you can see how the contrast changes dramatically with this small rotation. Another trick you can do while turning on the meter is pressing the yellow button. That will disable the 20 minute auto power of feature which will be enabled by default. I think next it's time to see the actual measurement tests. So let's go to the AC volts and start measuring something like the mains voltage. When the voltage on the input goes higher than 30 volts or something like that, the lightning bolt icon will show up in the upper left corner of the display. Indicating that there's high voltage on the inputs and there's risk of electric shock if you don't know what you are doing and you touch the wrong places. So be extra careful if you see that on the display. Let's try 
how this handles 9 volts which is higher than the first range of 6 volts so will there be any overshoot I can't see any every now and then it might show one reading too low before the actual reading but I don't see any overshoot the overshoot is usually caused by the auto ranging changing the range so that's why I used over 6 volts to test that but let's see how well this measures 1 volt or so of this dead AAA battery. I'm just testing the reading speed and there doesn't seem to be any huge delays. The measurement speed is quite good but how is the accuracy? Let's test 2.048 test voltage and the reading settles at 2.046 so 2 counts lower, not bad. Next is 10 volts test voltage and that's 9.98 or 9.99 not bad either both readings were off by 0.1% which is quite well within the stated accuracy when testing continuity with the leads that came with the meter really fast it can miss beeps quite often but at little bit slower speed it is quite good it could be better and the tips of the probes might be the cause of these problems. With 2 volt maximum voltage and 0.5 mA current, the diode check can lead up the red LED and so its voltage of 1.6 volts. Even though this multimeter lacks backlight, current measurement and millivolt and microvolt measurements on the DC range, this is quite good multimeter, especially if this is a secondary multimeter in addition to other more feature-rich multimeter. I think the build quality really makes up for those missing features. If you haven't already, check out my other videos, consider subscribing and liking this video.